Hey guys, Azure X here, and uh, let's go for another Linux talk. So, in today's Linux talk, I feel like I need to address the issue that a lot of people are seeing about how to pick a distribution and how to pick it, more importantly, how to pick a desktop environment. So, when it comes to picking a distribution, you can't choose it based off of a desktop environment that you see. What you see in front of you, if you see a screenshot, what you see on there is only a skin deep uh, information about the distribution. What really matters is the core elements of what the distribution does. How easy is it to use? What kind of hardware does it support? Uh, what kind of features does it add in? How can I install packages and extra features I may want? And how many of those features are available? So things like how big is the repositories for the for the desktop uh, for the distribution? What are my options in case I don't like what particularly comes mainly installed in it and stuff like that? The whole point about Linux is that there's different choices that you can make, and distributions sum up everything and bring in a whole variety of packages. So you can either have the choice of making choices on uh, what desktop environment you want to run in and still have the same distribution or do you want to build the entire distribution by yourself which is offered and well mostly in other ones so just to clarify here I'm going to talk about two things a lot of people discuss and the differences between them so desktop environment and window manager so the desktop environment and this information I'm quoting from the Arch Linux wiki uh, but this is also available in many other places uh, the Arch Linux wiki though is pretty renowned for having a huge amount of documentation on it uh, on everything in here so there's tons of information on this the page for the desktop environment one is just huge it does comparisons against every one of them and all that so if uh, you wanted to look to see what your options are you could go with the arch wiki or you could go with several other wikis uh, the Ubuntu documentation series uh, the open source wiki and several of the other ones that give you really good uh, overviews of what they do so, desktop environments provide a complete graphical user interface, GUI, for a system by bundling together a variety of X clients written using a common widget toolkit and a set of libraries. So, basically, what this means is that it bundles together a variety of X clients, common graphical interface and icons, windows, borders, uh, toolbars, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, it basically gives you everything that you need to. Uh, have a completely running system so it gives you a file manager it gives you a terminal uh, emulator it gives you a unified appearance across all your applications that are written in the same toolkit as it um, for instance two of the big ones KDE and GNOME uh, KDE is written in Qt uh, GNOME is written in GTK uh, both of them are very very clean looking very very good desktop environments but they are a little heavy on their end there's also some lighter desktop environments you can take a look at. There is Cinnamon, which provides a similar look and feel to what many would say looks like a Windows type of uh, desktop. You have Enlightenment, which is an entirely new thing on its own. Um, it's extremely efficient, breathtaking window manager is how the ArchWiki puts it. Basically, it does look very, very good. It's very lightweight, so it's somebody that has a really old computer or a not-so-powerful computer can run that. Uh, GNOME is a uh, pro is is one of the most popular versions of a desktop environment for the Linux community. Uh, it has very good integration between applications and the rest of the desktop environment. It's attractive and intuitive for desktop users. It's free, usable, accessible, international, developer friendly, organized, supported, and, and has a great community. Um, it's probably one of the oldest desktop environments on this list, uh, next to KDE. KDE consists of a large number of individual applications and a desktop workspace as a shell to run these applications. Similar in a way that GNOME works, uh, or GNOME, however you want to put it. Uh, the biggest thing between them, though, is that KDE actually provides you a really nice appearance and widget toolkit. Um, the desktop on both uh, the new versions are is not really treated as a traditional desktop in the way that you don't see icons being placed on the desktop. You can add icons to the desktop, but out of the box or its default settings, it's not going to put icons on the desktop. I use KDE personally, and one of the things I like about it is how I can take the desktop and I can throw a widget on there which just displays all of my files in a particular folder. So if I want a widget from my home folder, 
I can do one for my downloads, my documents, my programming folder, whatever I want. Uh, so we have LXDE, which stands for the Lightweight X11 Desktop Environment. X11 and the X server is what all of your display environments, your graphics card drivers and all that use to actually give you the images on your monitor there. So it's pretty much the back end of all this right now. Uh, it's fast and energy saving. It looks really good. It has a lot of it is written with QT, but uses less CPU and RAM than most other environments, which is a really nice thing, especially once again, if you have uh, low hardware specifications, uh, netbooks, you know, older, older PCs, uh, so on and so forth. It also says on the ArchWiki, it's pretty interesting. It says on here, beneficial for cloud computers. I'm guessing if that means like something like Jolly Cloud, where it's something you install, but then it runs everything else from the cloud, or maybe it's a cloud virtualized computer, you can use LXDE. LXDE looks really nice and is really lightweight. Um, you also have XFCE. It's the embodiment of the traditional Unix philosophy of modularity and reusability. Uh, once again, it's based on, I believe it's based on an older version. Of, it's based on GTK, yep. It's written in the same stuff GNOME is. Uh, once again, it tries to, it it's does a similar thing as LXDE. It provides highly functional, uh, modern-looking desktop environment and remains extremely light. So, if you've got a pretty beefed-up computer, or a pretty decent computer, in fact, GNOME and KDE are pretty good options for you. Uh, if you have a lighter weight computer, well, I guess... Kind of in the middle there, Cinnamon. If you have Cinnamon's a little bit heavier than, uh, uh, let's say, LXDE or XFCE. Um, it's a little bit heavier than that. Um, so you can get into uh, uh, running that if you have a uh, somewhat decent computer. Or if you have a really hefty computer too, you could run Cinnamon. Um, LXDE and, K and XFCE, if you really don't know what you want to do. Or if you have a slightly older machine... And if you have a really, really old machine, you can go with Enlightenment. Um, I think Enlightenment's pretty much one of the lightest in here. Um, it's also, I forgot to mention this, Enlightenment E17 is also one of the most customizable. Um, to some extent, why am I getting a phone call? I'm recording now. Um, to some extent, yeah, it's it's one of the most themable ones. I think that it adds more in themes than uh, GNOME or KDE or uh xfce but not too much you've also got um a nice thing about the ArchWiki is that it lists off some of the other ones which are either in development or uh are really not used very commonly um we have mate m-a-t-e which is basically gnome 2 uh that may seem for you new guys that may seem a little different to you but uh, or, uh, you might not understand what I mean when I say it's a fork of GNOME 2. Basically, um, when the new GNOME came out, it changed everything of what people liked in GNOME 2. Uh, now, most people are like GNOME 3. I like GNOME 3. I didn't really like GNOME 2 that much. Um, but some people actually really liked GNOME 2, so they made Mate, which basically takes everything GNOME was doing and forks it from after a point from GNOME 2 and continues on in the appearance that GNOME 2 had. Um, it's uh, more along that it's traditional, is what it says. You have Unity, which is really only found on Ubuntu desktops. Uh, the ArchWiki does give you a way that you can actually install it. Um, the problem with it is that it doesn't really work that well on anything other than Ubuntu. And then it's got a really nice uh, comparison of them, of the back ends and all that stuff. So, yeah, let's see here. LXDE. Uh, whoa, LXDE is actually GTK. Okay, news to me. Got stuff like Razer QT. Um, now, the, the the really cool thing about this page here is that it actually shows you the basics of what a desktop environment has. So you have the widget toolkit, which was what I was telling you, GTK or QT, uh, window manager, terminal emulator, file manager, text editor, image viewer, audio player, and web browser. Um, which it looks like there's Firefox for most of them. Firefox and, a, ooh, Midori's got on here for some of them. I think that's actually, I don't think that's independent, uh, dependent of all the distributions. I think they actually can choose what, what of the different a actual applications go in. Um, but terminal emulators, um, we have uh, XFCE has its own terminal. 
Uh, LX terminal for LXDE. GNOME terminal terminal for GNOME. And KDE console. That's pretty easy. Now, the difference, though, is where the window managers come in. And window managers would actually be the second step. If you installed a full desktop environment, you can. Uh, you can change the window manager a little bit. It doesn't work too well some of the times because they're usually written well together. Um, but you can also go with a window manager that has a running desktop environment that you can use to work with. So uh, Cinnamon uses one called Muffin. Uh, which you'll see on these desktop environment ones that like cinnamon, the ones I just named off, they're not going to be too much different between them. It's just a different design approach from the coding standpoint. Uh, enlightenment uses enlightenment 17 with, well, no, it uses enlightenment, which is what it's called enlightenment 17. Cause that's the version that's out right now. Gnome uses mutter gnome, uh, mate. I'm sorry. Yeah. Gnome uses mutter. LXDE uses open box. Uh, XFCE uses uh, XF window manager. Mate uses Marco, which is one of their custom ones. KDE uses KWIN. So um, if you really want to know more about those, you just look them up. Uh, they're pretty much, though, very similar, but work sometimes work a little bit differently. Um, for instance, uh, one of the uh, the one in KDE KWIN. Is also an a, a, uh, advanced composite compositor, um, which basically means that it can composite and render 3D uh, workspace, uh, 3D windows and stuff like that. Which the other ones can, but uh, KWIN adds in the ability to actually change what version of OpenGL you end up using. You can switch between multiple versions, rendering methods. You can uh, change the different effects you can have wobbly windows which seems to be everybody's favorite thing about linux is wobbly windows because you can sit there and shake a window and it wobbles to shit and you're like oh okay that's cool um the next one up is window managers uh so this is breaking into what the desktop environments use to actually manage the windows and all that but a lot of these do in fact have um have desktop environments that are actually work with them too um, they're just mainly called window managers because they are just the window management element and uh, you basically add things as you go. One of them that I see a lot of people using they'll actually start off with is called Awesome. Literally, it's actually called Awesome. And uh, basically, it's highly configurable next generation framework window manager for X. Uh, it's configured in Lua, which is a scripting language, has a system tray information bar and launcher built in. So it is a desktop environment to some extent, just not a full featured one. So it comes with some basic essentials, but really nothing else. Uh, you can get extensions that are available to be written in, uh, that are written in Lua. Uses uh, Xlib. It has a speed increase um, because of a new backend that it uses. Uh, it has other features as well, such as notification daemon, uh, daemons, which are basically things that, like services that run in the background. So it has a notification service, a right-click menu, uh, where basically if you actually right-click inside the desktop, it will actually bring up a little app menu and you can set it to either have all your apps that you have installed or actually launch, uh, different, have like quick bar apps that you want to launch, um. It's not a fully featured one as in, let's say, LXDE or any of the other ones I just named off because you have to kind of install the extra stuff that you want. So you need a, to install your own terminal in, uh, terminal manager uh, emulator, uh, when, um, file manager. Uh, you need to install a web browser, music player, all that. So it, the window managers, uh, tiling, uh, different window managers, if you want to use those just on your own, that's really their... Uh, even though they're used in desktop environments, if you install just a window manager, one like Awesome or some of the other ones that have a desktop environment that they come with, and I, I say that in desktop environment in quotation marks, it's uh, something that you would build yourself. So if you really like to play around and not have all these default apps installed, these packages of apps, which some people are like that. Personally, I'm not because I like some of the default ones, especially in KDE, uh, but you can do that. There's also some that will replace um, existing window managers. Uh, one of the most popular ones up until pretty recently was Compiz or Compiz, C-O-M-P-I-Z. Uh, it's an OpenGL compositing manager. Basically, it does the same thing 
uh, the KWIN does. It lets you uh, change OpenGL methods, give you a nice look to your desktop environment, and adds in stuff like wobbly windows and transparencies and stuff like that. Um, pretty much, if you're using KDE, those features are already used in KWIN. But if you are using something like GNOME or maybe even one of the lighter ones, you could uh, add compies in to make it look nice and uh, have a nice OpenGL uh, graphical 3D rendering look to it instead of a 2D kind of rendering. Um, something that's pretty big in uh, a lot of people do in XFCE and uh, um, LXDE is they might install Compi since even though it's a little bit heavier, it's not that much heavier since it's only going off a of GPU. And usually most computers nowadays either have a graphics card or they have an integrated card, which could definitely handle compies pretty easily. Um, there's also a few other here. Fluxbox. Now, this one was uh, a couple years ago. It was all the rage here. Uh, it uses C++ and is licensed under an MIT license. It's an extremely fast desktop experience. Uh, very light on resources and easy to handle, but full of features to make it easy. Um Kind of. It does the same idea that I told you about Awesome, where it doesn't have really anything. It's all configured, though, so you can. it has a right-click menu that you can sit there and uh, click all your apps and stuff like that and open different, um, open different uh, um, applications from that. But like I said, it's a very basic one. Um, something that I would see running on, if somebody really wanted to, a server... Um, or some computer where you need 95% of your resources going to something else other than Display Manager, which 95% of the time is people that will run Linux without using a desktop environment or Display Manager. I, I mean, especially if you're on a server, it's almost asinine to run a desktop environment on a server because it takes up much more overhead that you that you could afford to have to your other services. I mean, if you're running a web server, there's no need to have uh, a desktop environment. All you do is do SSH and FTP and uh, send files that way so that you can get things running and SSH to manage it, but do all your actual work on a desktop environment on another computer. Um, but, you know, you have a bunch of different choices, and that's one of the beautiful things about Linux, as I've said a million times, is that you have choices and that it respects your freedom. And I don't want to sound like Richard Stallman here, but the guy does have some good thoughts on things sometimes. Well, most of the times he does. It's just the way he goes about doing it and making it all. Woo. They're infringing upon our rights. Woo. Type of deal. So, um, hmm. Great that I get an email that says Mercedes Benz of El Paso. I thought I freaking muted my phone. Guess not. I don't live in Texas. What the f... Okay. Well, guys, I think that pretty much sums up what I wanted to do in this Linux talk. Um, so if you guys, like I said in the last one, if you guys really like what's going on here, give me a like, give me some comments on what you think I should do better or what you really like about these uh, little talks. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.